Anyone who knows me knows I'm a huge fan of emulation. Way back in the late 90s when I first found out about the technology, the idea that I could play a Super Nintendo game on my computer without paying for it, blew my little mind away. So emulation has been a hobby that I've cherished for, what, 20 years now. And I'm a big fan not only of emulation, but portable emulation, the emulation that you can take on the go with you. Today, there are lots of solutions for emulation on the go, and I wanna to talk to you about some of them. As you can see here, I have a plethora of portable machines that are capable of emulation. Let's start with the easiest solution, your cell phone. I mean, this is a bad example because I have an iPhone 10, and as you know, emulation isn't as easily available on an iPhone as it is with an Android device. I have an Android phone here somewhere. However, if you have an Android device, you can download emulators directly from the Play Store and play your games like that. But of course, with touchscreen controls, it's not the best experience in the world. And that's where something like this comes in. This is a Bluetooth controller and a cheap one at that that allows you to basically do this. Let's uh, put the phone like this. So that's what it, this, it turns your phone into a portable console of sorts. So you have your buttons here, you have shoulder buttons here. Most of these controllers have the exact same layout. You got analogs and that way you can play a bunch of retro games. And of course, there are options when it comes uh, to controllers. You have something like this, which is more uh, pocketable and a little cheaper. Or you can go with something like this. It's a little bit more premium, but it works the same way. You can put your, control your, uh, your phone here on top of the controller and you can play your games like this. It's less portable because this you know it's it's a little more involved it's a little bit bigger you can just carry this in your pocket like with this guy right here but it offers a much better experience the grip is much better the triggers the uh, the triggers here has two sets of triggers as you can see uh, the analogs click it's it's just better all the way around but this is still two different devices that rely on your phone to do the gaming for you. What if you're not into playing games on your phone? Uh, what if you're not into this kind of setup where you have your phone perched atop a controller like this? What if this is not your thing? Well, there are options. Of course, we have to talk about the PSP. The PSP is the powerhouse of emulation. Back in, I wanna say 2005 is when hackers figured out how to make the PSP run unsigned code, which basically means to run software that was not sanctioned by Sony. And of course, the moment that became possible, hackers started putting out emulators for the system. And the majority of my playtime with the 16-bit library was not on those consoles, it was on Sony's PSP. In fact, I never ever bought a single PSP game. This thing was just an emulation machine to me and nothing more. The PSP is a very capable emulation machine and it runs everything right up to the N64. I say right up to the N64 because it is capable of running N64 games, but you're not going to have the best experience. Now, if you're looking for Super Nintendo, Sega, Genesis, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, PlayStation 1, this thing is your guy. Because I'm such a huge fan of the PSP, uh, I also have the PSP Go, like I mentioned recently. Uh, the PSP Go is my go-to PSP system to play with right now. I have a black one as well, but the white one is just so sexy. And as you can see here, I'm playing uh, Pokemon Fire Red, emulating from the Game Boy Advance. So since we're talking about Game Boy Advance, uh, this might be a good time to bring up this guy right here. This is the Revocate 101 Plus, I think it's that's a long name. This is basically a hardware clone of the GBA, the Game Boy Advance. So it has, let me turn it on here. It's been a while since I played with this thing. I'm not even sure if the battery's charged. Well, luckily I have another one. Let's see here. If this battery is charged, I guess not. Probably should have charged these things before the video. Oh, no, wait, the battery is alive. There we go. Okay, so this is a hardware clone of the GBA. What that means is that, let me turn it off here. What this means is that you can play your actual, I'm gonna grab a big handful of these games here so you don't think I'm just a pirate. I still collect games, see? Uh, so you can play your original GBA titles, like say, 
Super Mario Brothers 2. Let's turn that thing on. So as you can see, it runs original cartridges and it has a backlight, something the original GBA didn't have. So it's an actually it's an actually pretty decent device, but on top of being a hardware clone that can run original games, the Revo K101 Plus, I think, that I got it right this time, comes with, if I can find it here in the middle of this mess, something called a K card, which is essentially a flash card. More on that in a while. You put that in here, you turn this thing on, and it loads right into the menu. If, uh, I, there we go. So it loads right into the menu here, and as you can see, there's a list of ROMs that this thing is capable of running. Say, let's see here, Advanced Wars. One of my favorite titles that Nintendo and Intelligent Systems has since forgot. Anyway, so there you have it. So you can play ROMs, GBA ROMs, on this thing with a screen that's leagues better than anything Nintendo has ever put out for a Game Boy platform. So a really decent option, but you're pretty much stuck with GBA. It also emulates a few other systems, but not as well as the GBA. So you have those options, right? You have a cell phone. You can play ROMs on your cell phone, provided you're not rocking an iPhone. You can use something like a PSP, which is a system that has been modified to run unsigned code, in this case, emulators. You can also run ROMs on original hardware via a flash card. This is the EZ Flash 4, which is a GBA flash card. You put a little SD card on the side here, loaded with ROMs, put it into an original uh, Game Boy. Let's turn, I'm not sure if this thing is on, uh, if it's charged. There we go. The battery's still charged. And as you can see, it'll load into the menu of the flash card and show uh, a list of ROMs. This is my least favorite way to emulate because it's the experience is a little slow and I'll show you what uh, what I mean here. I'm gonna load up Advanced Wars 2. So it has to unpack the ROM. I'm sure that's not the right word to use but you know what I mean. It's You see here it's saying there's a progress bar here. So you have to wait for the, lo the ROM to load and I just I'm not a huge fan of that. Not on a portable anyway so there you go. It doesn't take that long but it's still Kind of annoying if you ask me. But this comes with the benefit of running the game in the hardware it was meant for in the first place. So a few people prefer that. It's not exactly my case, but that's an option. Using flashcards, you can also run ROMs on hardware such as uh, the DS. This is my DS Lite. I'm currently playing through Pokemon uh, Heart Gold here. And it also has flashcards just like this that allows you to run ROMs so you can run uh, for this case if you have a slot 1 flash card meaning a flash card that looks like a DS game you can only run DS games if you have a slot 2 flash card uh, such as this let me let me save this here I'll show you here what I mean okay save turn it off so see through a slot 2 flash card you can also run ROMs on a DS. Now, of course, you're limited to playing basically GBA games with this flashcard. With the slot one flashcard, on the other hand, you can run some other emulators like uh, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and things like that. The experience I never found very good, so there's that. You're mostly gonna be emulating DS ROMs if you're planning on emulating on a DS at all. Of course, there's the more legitimate option of just buying those games on the virtual console on a system like the new 2DS XL. You're not working with the biggest slide but the heavy hitters are there and of course it ain't free but at least you're supporting uh, the developers I mean are you because I'm sure some of the people who made these games are not even alive anymore but I have to put it out there that the option for buying these games as opposed to let's say stealing them exists finally if you're really serious about emulation this is what you want I've mentioned this thing a lot of times here on my channel this is the GPD XD it's a Chinese tablet that is shaped like a Nintendo 3ds XL that runs Android meaning you can just download those uh, and uh, Play Store emulators I mentioned earlier I have this thing set up here as you can see on the screen uh, real nice there's a Super Nintendo emulator there there's a PS1 Dreamcast PSP GBA there's a DOS emulator, Game Boy, so this thing will emulate everything on top of playing actual Android titles. So uh, this here is the ultimate. This is if you're serious about emulation, this is probably the one you actually want. It has dual analog, so things like PS1 titles that you can run on a PSP will run much better on this just because of the inputs. It also has uh, four shoulder buttons just like the PS1 did. It, it ends up being a closer experience to playing it on original hardware, ironically enough, 
This would be the original hardware, being that it's an actual PlayStation device, it's made by Sony, but the experience of playing PS1 games on the GPDXD ends up being actually superior. So there you have it. These are the options for playing emulation on the go. The most affordable, most accessible one would be to just play it on your cell phone with maybe, like I said, a little Bluetooth controller. These are really affordable. You can throw this in your backpack and not even notice it's there. But some people don't, I personally don't like that kind of jerry-rigging a phone and a controller together. It's not for me. Uh, I prefer something like the GPDXD just because it can emulate basically everything below and including the Dreamcast. It has all the controls you might need to analogs for shoulder buttons, but it's not the most pocketable. This is a little bit on the heavy and bulky size. If I'm looking for something that's easy to carry around, I guess the easiest would be uh, the Game Boy Micro, but then I'm stuck with really only playing GBA games, GBA ROM, so not ideal. Plus, the battery life on this thing is not the best. I've replaced the battery and I'm still not getting what I hope to get out of this thing. So, it's not what I would recommend personally for emulation. Oh, and by the way, I guess I should mention this, flashcards usually drain the battery a little bit faster than regular games, so that's something to consider. Maybe that's why I'm not getting the battery life I hope to get. When it comes to a good balance between portability and price and the amount of systems that it can emulate, I think I'm going to go with the PSP. Of course, the PSP Go is a little bit on the pricier side, especially the white one, which is a little bit harder to come across, but I think this has the full package. You can run a lot of different games. It's not very expensive. It's very pocketable. In fact, look at this, look at this. See? And it can emulate anything right up to the PS1 really well. So out of everything I mentioned here, I'm going to say the best package, the best overall package would have to be the PSP Go. Price, size, and emulation capability. What do you think? Which is your favorite device to play emulators on the go? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's all the time I have today. I'll see you guys next time.